Hello, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. But first of all, I want to say I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. I'm very, very thankful for our Father who loves us and gives us grace and gave us the gift of His Son. I'm thankful for his word. Thankful for my family. I have a great family. And I'm also very thankful for my YouTube family. You guys are amazing encouragement to me and a tremendous blessing. And uh, I look forward to meeting all of you, I think, very, very soon. And uh, so with that, let's let's get into this. Uh, quite a few news stories. I want to try to get this through this video fairly quickly tonight. Keep it short, but I have a lot to cover. We have the uh, Paris Climate Change Summit coming up, I believe, actually starting next week. And uh, world leaders are going to get together and agree on a treaty to uh, completely change how the world conducts business and climate change and the carbon footprint and all that stuff. If you read the fine print, if you read what they actually, honestly, in fact, I've got a new story I'm going to cover here in just a minute. You don't even have to read the fine print. They come right out and tell you. This is all about the new world order, global government, and they're coming right. They come right out and tell you people will not listen. I really believe that the 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 way that the new world order and and uh, is going to be brought in very easily is because basically they lead everybody to believe that we're crazy. That this is a this is a conspiracy theory. It's a crazy conspiracy theory. So the people that are involved, who are involved, help promote the. That, that it's a crazy conspiracy theory. Even though they're telling you the truth and it's right in front of you. People are just so asleep they won't pay any attention. So uh, let's let's connect some dots. I got a lot of news stories I want to cover. But we're heading into a very important time, I believe, with this climate change conference and this treaty that they want to they wanna confirm. Um, first headline, building a bomb. Now easier for us than making a contact lens, claims an Iranian official. This is how the Times of Israel today. Let me read that headline again. Building a bomb now easier for, for us than making a contact lens. And they go on to say that, uh, you know, it, that, it, that well, I'll, I'll cover that in another article here in just a minute, but... Keep in mind that Iran kept saying they didn't want to bomb. They wanted their nuclear program for peaceful purposes. But now they're saying it would be very, very easy for them to build a bomb. And, uh, you know, but the reality is, if you, keep, you need to keep this in mind, Iran and Russia are allies. They're working together right now in Syria. They're mentioned together in Ezekiel 38 in the war of Gog and Magog against Israel. Iran threatens Israel almost daily. They threaten the United States almost daily. They're committed to the annihilation of Israel. So even if Iran doesn't get a bomb, they're allies with Russia. So Russia has plenty of nuclear weapons and their allies so essentially even without building a, a bomb when like push comes to shove and the and and they come against israel they, they have access to nuclear weapons through russia anyway uh speaking of russia here's another headline russia deploys s-400 missile battery in syria state media says the escalation of what's going on in syria with and with russia and turkey now and uh it's just Wow, it's just really coming together. Things are happening so fast with the wars and rumors of wars. And the situation in the Middle East is uh, pretty much a powder keg waiting to explode. Speaking of Iran, here's another headline. UN. No assurance Iran's nuclear program is all pe is all uh, peaceful. Really? Are you serious? What a surprise. I, it's amazing to me that the UN thinks that that is news. 
<laughs> the world is nuts. Iran makes it clear every single day that they want to wipe out Israel. <laughs> and yet, the United Nations and Barack Hussein Obama and Pope Francis have all been promoting this nuclear program with Iran and saying that it will lead to peace. And now the UN comes out all shocked that uh, there's no assurance that Iran's nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. Amazing. Let's move on. I, I'm going to read a little of this next article. CNN wipes Israel off the map. Surprise, surprise. Sounds like it comes right out of uh, Psalm 83. But the uh, article out of Breitbart News, CNN wipes Israel off the map. It says an article published on CNN's website featured a map that erased Israel and replaced it with Palestina, a Spanish or Portuguese translation of Palestine. The map, taken from Getty Images, accompanied a CNN Money article titled Beyond ISIS, 2016's Scariest Geopolitical Hotspots. Uh, after honest reporting cited the air, CNN took the map down and replaced it. It says, it says, whether it was an oversight or something more sinister, CNN's illustration of the Middle East without Israel is completely unacceptable. At a time when the state's very legitimacy is being called into question by vicious anti-Israeli extremists, any message that Israel does not belong in the Middle East plays into this false narrative and feeds those like the Iranian Ayatollahs who wish to see Israel erased from the map. How many times can CNN keep making these shoddy errors before the network takes remedial action to address its Israel problem? We fully expect CNN to replace this inaccurate map as quickly as possible. And exactly, though, when, when CNN does things like that, it just plays right into the anti-Semitism all around the world. And the, the blaming of Israel for what's going on and... Uh, well, you'll see what that leads to in, a few, in the next news story or two. Next headline, Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas, leader of the Palestinian Authority, asks the UN to set a deadline for the end of occupation, of the occupation of Judea and Samaria, once Israel moved out, once two-state solution. Also asking for the, for international, the international community to protect the Palestinians. Well, let me ask this. How about setting an end, how about the United Nations set an end to Palestinian terror activities and Temple Mount incitement? Like, how about right now? That would be a time to stop it. Just stop it right now. How about international protection for Israel, the one and only Jewish state on the planet. But again, the rule is turning against the Jewish people. It's turning against Israel exactly like the Word of God prophesied for the last days. And here's something that happened in Florida. Go back to Auschwitz. Rabbinical student assaulted in Florida. Unbelievable. A, a rabbinical student in Florida and a university in Florida told to go back to Auschwitz. But again, shouldn't be a surprise. Shouldn't be a surprise at all with rampant anti-Semitism on our college campuses <clears throat> being taught by professors who hate Israel. We shouldn't be surprised to see these types of attacks on Jewish students here in America, sad to say, but that's just seems to be the climate that most universities in America these days. Obama. It's illegal for states to refuse Syrian refugees. In fact, he mentioned today in his Thanksgiving uh, speech that uh, America was founded by refugees. And that the Syrian refugees are basically like the pilgrims coming over here. I have to ask, does Obama ever spend any time trying to make America better? 
or worry about the concerns that American citizens actually have. Someone should remind Obama that it's illegal to walk all over our Constitution. He constantly wants to remind us of, of things like it's illegal for states to refuse Syrian refugees while ignoring the desires of the American people, for the most part, and walking all over our rights. Okay, Pope in Kenya visits place of Obama's birth. No, sorry, that's not really the headline. Pope in Kenya. Francis warns against special interests derailing climate talks. This is a very interesting article. I'm, I'm going to get into this, and then I'm going to make a Mark of the Beast observation here. But let me, uh, let me get to this article. Again, headline, Pope in Kenya, Francis warns against special interests derailing the climate talks. And of course, again, we've got this climate agenda, this climate conference where they want to reach a treaty coming up. But something about this article I want to point out here. Uh, it says, Pope Francis has warned that it would be catastrophic for world leaders to let special interest groups get in the way of a global agreement to curb fossil fuel emissions on the eve of the make-or-break climate change talks in Paris. Uh, Francis has made ecological concerns a hallmark of his nearly three-year-old papacy issuing a landmark encyclical earlier this year that paired the need to care for the environment with the need to care for humanity's most vulnerable. Francis argues that the two are interconnected since the poor often suffer the most from the effects of global warming and are largely excluded from today's fossil fuel-based global economy that is heating up the planet. On Thursday, Francis repeated that message, but took particular aim at those who reject the science behind global warming. In the United States, that accounts for several Republican presidential candidates and lawmakers who have opposed steps Barack Obama has taken on his, on his own to cut greenhouse gas emissions. It would be sad, and I dare say even catastrophic, were special interests to prevail over the common good and to lead to manipulating information in order to protect their own plans and interests. Francis's environmental entreaty followed a call for interreligious dialogue and cooperation to guard against barbarous uh, Islamist extremist attacks that have struck the country. Now, let's just scroll back up here. It says, um, Pope Francis has made ecological concerns a hallmark of his nearly three-year-old papacy. And then it says, issuing a landmark encyclical earlier this year about the environment and, and uh, eliminating poverty. Now, I believe that's very, very interesting because, again, it also goes on to say that he took particular aim at those who reject his feelings, his beliefs, what he has written in his encyclical. If you are, if you don't believe that climate change is, is, is what... Pope Francis and the United Nations believe they're coming after you. It's that simple. And note the word mark used twice in that paragraph. He's made ecological concerns a hallmark and issued a landmark encyclical. Well, the reason I'm going into that and tying it to the fact that he's taking aim at climate change rejectors, deniers, is because a lot of people have said that, or say, or teach, or believe that Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. And I do not believe that. I do not believe that at all. And, and in fact, by the way, there's a great article about that that dispels that very thing on nowtheendbegins.com right now. Talking about the Sabbath and Christians in the Sabbath and uh, Sunday worship and how it in actual fact, it was not the papacy that changed that. However, I do believe that this is a very possible part of the mark of the beast. You will have to receive a chip or an implant or 
some sort of biometric in your hand or forehead to buy or sell. That'll control the, the resources and the buying and selling, the commerce, and help be how they can so-called redistribute the wealth. But Pope Francis' hallmark of his papacy is this climate change encyclical, this climate change agenda that's exactly in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda for 2030 and, and this climate change conference with the treaty that they're coming up with right now. I think there's a really good chance that the mark of the beast through Pope Francis and the Vatican will actually be this global climate change agreement that if you uh, do not accept that and go along with their laws and go along with their agenda... That is going to be part of the mark of the beast, not Sunday worship. Just a thought, but I really feel like it's a, it could be a very big part of it. The Sunday worship thing has never made sense to me, but this certainly does. And it goes right along with, like I said, what's going on with the United Nations and Pope Francis and his encyclical. That you will have to comply with whatever the agreement they make if it's the United Nations agenda situation. There's new global laws. You have to agree to them. You will have to accept them. It'll be Pope Francis's deal, his mark, his agenda with the United Nations. Uh, not saying that for sure. And again, as I've always maintained, I do not believe the church will be here when the Antichrist is finally revealed. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse six to eight. Uh, but uh, I, I certainly think that's a possibility. Let's move on. As I said earlier about conspiracy theories and how they're coming right out and telling us the truth and people aren't paying attention, here's, a, here's an article I want to get into, a very important article. Um, if we take action now, we can address climate change and build a sustainable future. This is about this climate change uh, conference, summit, whatever you want to call it, where they are going to agree on a treaty. Um, but the, again, I just want to read the first couple of paragraphs of this uh, out of the UN News Center. It should wake people up. It says here that um, just days away from the kickoff of the 21st United Nations Climate Change Conference, the UN is reminding its main actors that this conference must be a turning point for climate action. Beginning on Monday in France's capital, Paris, world leaders will be negotiating a new climate change agreement that aims to keep global average temperature rise below 2 degrees, beyond which climate experts say there will be irreversible impacts. The two-week conference, the 21st meeting of the state's parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, also aims to, this is the important part right here, also aims to send a loud and clear signal to citizens, markets, and the private sector that the transformation of the global economy is inevitable, beneficial, and already underway. That's the United Nations coming right out and telling you, global economy, the transformation of that is inevitable, beneficial, and already underway. Many of us watchmen have been trying to tell you that it's already underway, but no one wants to wake up and believe it. What exactly is glo the global economic system, the transformation of the global, econ of the global economy that they say is inevitable? Well, again, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now let's just go to verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Keep in mind that the Pope is just a man. A man who claims to replace God on earth. A man whose number, his, his, uh, his title, Vicar of Christ, if you add that up, 
adds up to 666. Um, but again, the, the United Nations coming right out and telling you global economic transformation is inevitable, beneficial to everybody, and already underway. Uh, let me make it very, very clear. You will not like the action the New World Order is going to take. It's not going to be beneficial. And you're not going to like it. And I hope, you'll, if you're not awake yet, that you'll wake up soon to see what's happening right before your very eyes. Speaking of all this, climate change is a UN-led hoax to create a new world order. Australian, Australian's Prime Minister and his advisor say, calls the notion a myth or a strong, or, or a myth or a new, a, a, a delusion. The United Nations climate change agenda is a UN-led hoax to create a new world order. Now, before you think that it sounds all crazy, just start reading what's going on with Pope Francis and the United Nations and the climate change agenda, and you can see that that's exactly what it's all about. It's not even debatable at this point. They are doing it to bring in the new world order. It says the real agenda is concentrated political authority. Global warming is the hook the UN the UN is against capitalism, freedom, and wants to create a new world order. And Pope Francis is their perfect leader. He's the one that they say has the moral authority to enforce all of this. And I'm telling you, the encyclical that Pope Francis wrote lines up completely with the Agenda 21, and now they call it the Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. And again, they're about to meet and agree on it treaty and uh call very very good point here that they said they call this the the un climate change hoax it's a they call the notion a myth or a delusion many 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 people are already believing that delusion and they're allowing it to bring in this change that's going to be completely detrimental to the world's economy to your way of life what you can do control of the resources, your entire future. And they're going to tell you it's for your good and the common good of the planet. We have to do it. It's our only hope. Jesus Christ is your only hope, and I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. But uh, speaking of this delusion, this climate change delusion, could definitely be very much part of Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene. He's going to deceive the masses. God is going to send a strong delusion on all those that re rejected the gospel rejected salvation, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, were left behind, and they will believe the lie. They will believe this lie that the new world order is going to perpetuate. Bible prophecy is coming to pass like never before. New world order. UN Secretary Excuse me, UN secretly. I gotta really work on my hand right. I can't read my notes. New World Order. UN secretly planning court to judge US for climate change. The official draft text of the climate treaty for the soon to start UN climate summit in Paris, which again starts Monday, proposes to establish a global Supreme Court that would rule on issues such as climate justice, climate finance, technology transfers, and climate debt. Debt, finance, world economy, mark of the beast, 
Climate justice. What kind of justice is the new world order going to force on people who choose not to go along with their new rules, laws, and global laws and agenda? Well, let's go back to Revelation chapter 13. <clears throat> Verse 15. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. When they talk about climate justice within the new world order, I know it sounds very far-fetched, but uh, it's coming. And uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had, his, had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Soon, anybody that refuses to follow this new world order agenda and refuses to receive the mark, will be, not be able to, be, to buy or sell, and they will track you down, and they will behead you. Just, look, the Bible makes it very, very clear. And again, it is absolutely time to wake up. But they want this global supreme court. You know, speaking of climate change and weather, Jesus Christ is, contr is in control. He always has been and he always will be. And he can control the climate as well. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, is one of my favorite passages of Scripture where a storm comes up on the Sea of Galilee and disciples are scared. And Jesus wakes up and rebukes the storm and it immediately calms. But you know what? Jesus also said in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, that the sea and the waves will roar and men's hearts will fail them for fear of what's coming upon the earth. Yes, there is crazy weather. No question about it. But it's not because people are driving cars. It's because... We're living in the last days, and the birth pangs that Jesus told us about are in full force, and they're just going to get worse. And when Jesus re 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 removes his, his restraining hand, his Holy Spirit, which is holding back all that's <laughs> going to happen, then this world will really see true climate change. To the point of 100-pound hailstones coming down. And the sun getting so hot that it scorches people on the earth. Read it in the book of Revelation. And what do people do? They blaspheme God. They don't turn and repent. They blaspheme God because of the hundred pound hailstones and the scorching sun. We're living in the last days. It's not man-made climate change. It's signs from Jesus Christ to repent. And turn to him while you still can, because it's just going to get worse. Man cannot fix the problem. Period. Uh, now, not only is the United Nations calling for a global Supreme Court, guess who else is? Shouldn't surprise you. Pope Francis. Pope calls for a new global political authority to save humanity. Well, Pope... Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago to save humanity. And I've never heard that simple message come from your lips and ever in a sermon. That's the simple truth. Jesus Christ has died to save humanity. He's the only one who can save humanity. And the coming global political authority that the UN and Pope Francis are calling for will not save humanity. It will destroy humanity. Remember Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22, Jesus himself said, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, 
no flesh would survive. Which, again, reminds me of, we're talking about global courts. We're talking about laws and changes of laws and agendas. And saving humanity and how things have to happen and now. We have to act now or, or, the, or the planet's done, supposedly. I'm looking for a new heaven and a new earth. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, but let's just cover the Georgia Guidestones again briefly. George Guidestones, number one, maintain humanity under 500 million. There are over 7 billion people on the planet right now. And the new world order would like the world's population to be down to about 500, actually it says under 500 million people. There is serious depopulation coming through the mark of the beast, through beheading people, through wars, through calamities. It's all coming. Revelation chapter 6, when the fourth seal, uh, verse 8, Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, in his name that set on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. And with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. That's almost two billion people. Two billion people. Exactly why Jesus said, the very few will survive the final seven year period of time. Probably about what the Georgia guy Stone said. Somewhere around 500 million would be my guess. And they say to maintain humanity under... 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. As I was talking about the, my idea of what the mark of the beast may entail, besides technology like the RFID type technology, so you can't buy or sell, will be agreeing to Pope Francis's climate change laws and his agenda and the treaty and following it. And if you do not agree to do that and to play your part, uh, as as also on the Georgia Guidestones, it says, uh, balance personal rights with social duties. Once the new world order is here, you're not going to have any personal rights. All you're going to have are their social duties. And if you don't agree, they will kill you. Uh, let all, here's another Georgia Guidestones, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Back up to Pope Francis calls for a new global political authority to save humanity. Back up to the next article, United Nations, secretly planning court to judge for climate change. The problem is when they say here, let uh, all nations rule internally not truly going to happen because they're going to make this whole global citizen situation and for the common good we're all part of the same global the same, the same planet we're all part of the same humanity and for common good we've all got to come together no more national sovereignty and wars based on that no more religious wars this one world gov government one world religion probably based on the whole mother earth kind of scenario <clears throat> it's all coming together I cannot believe how fast I'm not I'm not at all surprised in what's happening because the Bible told us what's going to happen but I'm amazed at how fast it's coming together and I'm more amazed at how asleep most people are and how unprepared and if that's you I pray that today you will make a decision that today is the day a salvation. You are not guaranteed another breath and you do not want to die in your sin. Somebody criticized me for making threatening people, threatening people. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just sharing the gospel and I'm sharing the word of God. These are not my words. I'm not telling you you're going to go to hell if you don't uh, believe in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ tells you you're going to go to hell if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. I'm just relaying the message. I'm just relaying the word of God. And there's enough around the world right now of false doctrine and false teaching and enough kumbaya, we're all worshiping the same God. God's a God of love. God would never condemn anybody. No, He would never send anybody to hell. We're all on our own path to find our own God. We're all heading the same place. No, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you the truth. The Bible makes it very, very clear. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, it is a gift. We cannot do anything to earn our salvation. No matter how good a person you think you are, no matter how good deeds you do, you cannot be good enough to earn salvation. And being a member of any particular denomination and doing religious rituals, that doesn't save you either. You are saved by grace through faith alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The gospel is very, very simple. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, suffered and died on the cross, and he rose again on the third day. He died for your sins. If you believe that and are willing to turn from your sin, he will forgive you. He will write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray you will do so. Make sure you're ready. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you. Thank you for a great day. I thank you for that I live in a country that at this point is still relatively free. Thank you for the many blessings you've given me and my family. And I I want to pray for my YouTube family. And I want to pray, pray blessings upon them. And I pray a special blessing upon all who hear this message today. I thank you, Lord, for your love and mercy and the forgiveness through the, the blood of Jesus Christ. And I just pray you'll use this message to encourage the believers and reach the lost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless everyone.